Welcome back to Flammer Brian. Getting back to work on this right wing. I'll show you what we're doing today. So you can see I've got the, the wing in the rotisserie and I've got it rotated. Uh, I got some of my thin adhesive and I put a couple of coats along each rib. Um, if you'll remember, uh, before I put the fabric on, there were also a couple of coats of adhesive below on the actual surface of the rib. So that'll tack that fabric down uh, not a super strong bond, but it'll tack that fabric down along the ribs. Next thing I did was I, I got my wood burning tool, and I'll show you a closer look at that tool. You can see it's just got a little uh, little round kind of bit in it. And I burned holes uh, in each rib, in the fabric above each rib, uh, where the holes were already there. Those holes are made for the wire clips that hold that, hold that fabric down. So I did that along each rib. Then I got my neighbor Kurt to help me, and we got a, uh, a chalk line, and we popped a chalk line along each rib. The ribs themselves are about as straight as I could get them, but they're 70-year-old uh, ribs, so they get a little wobble to them, and that, that chalk line will give me a nice reference. Because uh, after doing the chalk line, you can see what I'm doing now as I'm putting these uh, reinforcing tapes along the top of the rib. And... Uh, when I have all the tapes on, I'll get that burning tool again. We'll burn back through where the holes are. Uh, I burn the first time just because it makes them easier to see underneath the tape. But uh, we'll burn through the tape, and uh, that'll give us a nice reinforced hole ready for the wire clips to go along uh, the wing. Uh, this is the top of the right wing. I haven't done anything to the bottom yet, but uh, once we finish the top, I'll move to the bottom and get that knocked out as well. So this is a roll of the Telecraft wire. You can probably, hopefully you can see this. See the clips in there? Each one of the long ribs on the wing has uh, 17 holes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I cut that halfway between the two, giving me the 17 notches for the rib. And my convention has been to have this notch here facing the leading edge. And I start in the trailing edge. Hopefully you can see. Press the notch, pop it into the hole, and then it pops back out. Let's see if you can actually see the clip going in here. And that little lip just grabs the edge of the hole, stays put. doing the uh, left wing what this does is it keeps this fabric uh, this is the top of the wing so there's low pressure up there and this, this fabric wants to pull away from the ribs and this this uh, wire keeps it from doing that uh, the more conventional method is to actually tie 
laces of string around the ribs. But this is a little bit faster. And I'm sure at the factory it went really fast. This last one, I get the little extra material to go down in that hole. What times I have to get this last one? So you see, it takes just a couple minutes to do each rib. We'll work our way down this wing and then uh, do the same procedure to the bottom. All right, that does it for this uh, clips for the top of the right wing. Now I need to do the uh, treatment to the bottom. Decided not to be too repetitive and show you putting all these tapes on again, but uh, you can see I drew a line down each rib and laid these uh, reinforcement tapes on top of the ribs. And now the next thing I'll do Let's go along the tapes, and you can see through there where there's a hole beneath. I'll burn the hole through this reinforcing tape and start putting the clips in. All the holes have been burnt into each rib. Now it's time to put the clips in. After about an hour's work, we've got these clips all in along the ribs of the bottom of the wing. So the wing is completely clipped. Now we're ready for uh, adding the finishing tapes. Well, I've been laying out these uh, lines for my finishing tapes. And instead of showing you the whole process, I'll sh give an example of what I did. So I, I would take a two inch tape and uh, lay it along the rib and the screws and eyeball it and get it get it laying nice and centered and straight and I took a pencil and just marked along each side of the tape and I got a straight edge connected the dots so uh, from the end of this skin wrapped around to the end of the skin on the other side I drew with pencil and then uh, we took chalk lines and snapped from one end to the other. So I have a nice continuous, somewhat straight reference to, uh, to lay down some adhesive and then lay down the finishing tapes. So that's what we're about to get started on.
Well, I've gotten started on some of these tapes. You can see I've done the shorter tapes, which go over the false ribs. And that leaves these long tapes, which go uh, over the complete rib. And it'll just be one continuous piece that wraps all the way around the leading edge. So I'll show you how that's done. Here I'm laying down the first coat of thinned adhesive between the lines I've drawn. After the first coat is on, I'll apply a second coat to provide a, a good base of adhesive for the uh, finishing tapes to adhere to. Now that I've got the finishing tape in position, I'm adhering the tape to the wing fabric by applying a coat of thin adhesive through the tape itself. Um, I'm making sure with the brush to fully wet the tape and smooth out any air pockets so that it, it, it makes a good bond with the adhesive that we already laid down below, uh, below the tape. So I've got to do that 11 more times. I won't uh, film all of that, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll do it 11 more times and we'll get back with you. After a solid two days of work, we've got all the cordwise tapes on, top and bottom. And hopefully you can see that they, they line up well with one another all the way around. So the next thing will be the span-wise tapes. They're gonna run along this leading edge, along that edge right there to reinforce it, and this edge right here. And then the same thing along the bottom, be along that edge. And it'll also go along the trailing edge. Along the trailing edge here and around that seam. That won't take as long as the, as the cordwise tapes took, but uh, hopefully about a day of work and laying those out and, and putting them on, and we'll be uh, down to just the inspection holes. We're just about done with this wing. Now I've taken my iron and I've gone over the edge of these tapes here. Uh, at a low setting, about 225, just to smooth the edges down and uh, got a little bit of the adhesive reducer and rubbed a couple spots where some little clumps were to make that nice and smooth. And I've laid out my lines. You can see the chalk line there. Uh, so I'm, I'm just prepping to put these span-wise tapes on. So I've got the lines laid out. That's the, uh, the bottom of the leading edge. Here's the bottom of the trailing edge. I'm gonna put the, uh, back to putting two coats of adhesive on. And uh, then we will put on the, uh, the tapes, the span-wise tapes, and we'll be just about done with the tapes. The 
This is the first of two coats of thin adhesive for the Spanwise tapes. Uh, I did not record the second coat of adhesive just for brevity's sake. Now I'm applying the wingtip tape. This tape uh, is a little bit tricky because of the curvature and it's made from bias tape. And bias tape is, uh, is cut at a 45 degree angle to the, uh, to the weave of the fabric. And that just allows it to, um, to kind of stretch and, and take the curvature uh, better. Well, I stopped the time lapse about halfway through and forgot to restart it, but I've got this uh, leading edge, I'm sorry, the uh, wingtip tape on. This is a bias tape to go around this curve, um, which as you pull it, it, uh, it takes the shape of a curve much better than just the regular straight tapes. It's a little bit finicky to work with. I had to, I uh, basically stopped this leading edge tape here and the trailing edge tape began here and then I made a small patch to go over it. It was just too hard to get to get that to lay down and make a nice uniform line along there. But that's the wingtip uh, bow tape there. Also finished up these uh, spanwise tapes. So uh, we're getting real close in this wing. It's time to go in and make the inspection hole covers and the doilies that go over those. This is the only inspection hole in the top surface of the wing. Uh, and this is just an access panel to get access to the aileron bell crank mechanism. Okay, well you saw me put down two coats inside where the uh, aluminum fitting went. And then I had two also on the aluminum. Then I glued the aluminum to the fabric. Now I've put two coats over all that. And I've cut out this piece of light fabric. And we're going to adhere it and get it in position my plan is to start with the inside portion
pencil here to try to help with the fabric to to go and lay up just right up in the corner against that metal there. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna let that set for a minute and I'll come back and do the, uh, the outer portion. And I'm waiting just because I didn't want to pull, uh, pull that back out, let it you know where I had taken the pencil. I got that nice and wet. And it just kind of pulls that fabric into the spot that I want there. And if you're worried about pencil marks, the uh, that doesn't show through the, the primer and the paint like Sharpie does. Well, that's pretty good. I'm going to let that dry some and take the iron and uh, smooth out a couple little uneven spots. I'm going to wait till the uh, adhesive is not so wet or it just makes a big mess. All right, well, I'll smooth that out with the iron just a little bit, just at a real low temperature, just enough to kind of get the wrinkles out, but not enough to start pulling the, the edge crooked and everything. So now I'm just going to re-wet it. It's just as a, a light coat of thin to fill the weave of that fabric in and adhere it to the underlying surface. Well, and uh, I realized that I didn't really tell you what this this is for. This is an access cover for the aileron bay, the aileron bell crank. I don't know if you can see it in here. This. Is This is the center hinge on the aileron, and this is where the bell crank comes out, and this is what actually actuates the aileron up and down. This is going to be an access panel to uh, get at that from the top. It's going to have little clip nuts and six holes that around the perimeter, and then this plate here will just uh, it'll screw down in position. So it's just a little access cover. <clears throat> We're going to flip the wing over now and, and put uh, inspection holes. Uh, all along the bottom at different critical inspection points. And, and what happens is, let me explain that very quick. Uh, after this wing is primed and painted, I'm going to come back and cut out the inside of this uh, so that that's, you know, gives me access to what's beneath. And then that a plate will, will cover up the hole. But uh, putting this doubler in here and then the fabric on top of that keeps that fabric taut and um, just allows me to have a hole in it while, it, while not disturbing the the, the overall tautness of the fabric. The bottom of the wing will get, um, here you can see on the, on the first wing, you see these round doilies. You will be putting those on, and it's the same uh, same principle. You cut out, um, cut out the center of it, and then there's these little plates, and they have little clips on the back of them. And instead of having screws, these just pop into position, and these little these little arms kind of clamp it, clamp it in position and hold it in that hole. 
So those are the inspection holes, and uh, we got to do those and the drain holes, and we're, we're going to be done with this right wing. I found this document on the Taylorcraft web forum. And I slightly tweaked the measurements just based on the fabric that I removed from this wing, uh, where those holes were, and then the fabric that I also put on the left wing. But uh, they were very, very close numbers, and I used those to mark the centers of each of the inspection holes in this bottom fabric. Once I had the centers of the holes located, I used the rings themselves to draw um, their location, and then I used this large roll of tape uh, to draw a circle where the, uh, the outermost part of the doily is going to lay. Now I'm applying two coats of thinned adhesive to these rings for the inspection holes, and I'll also apply two coats um, to the wing fabric uh, where these holes will be located. All right, well you saw me lay down. I put uh, the two coats on the small circle where the, uh, the little ring goes, and I adhered the ring to that, and then I put two coats over the whole thing, uh, and that's thin adhesive, and now I'm about ready to adhere the dolly over the top of it. this pencil to lay it in against the inside edge of the doily and make it lay down nice and smooth and tight. I'll come back in a second after that's flashed off and do the um, the outer portion of the doily. to replenish my glue supply from AirTech, which I just got in the mail today. So this is a fresh batch of adhesive. Now doing these outer portions of these doilies. You see I have a little small crease there uh, from when the fabric was folded, but uh, after the adhesive is dried out, I'll touch that up with my iron and it'll, that'll go right away.
good. That's got the inspection holes taken care of. And what they do is they allow me to, like I said, once it's painted, I'll cut out the inside of this circle. There's a little metal plate that clips over the hole. That's a removable. Uh, and once that's gone and popped out, um, I can inspect inside the wing for any kind of damage or just general inspection. And also, uh, there's some wire bracing in here that's called anti-drag and drag wires. And underneath each one of these is where um, you can adjust the tension on those. Um, so that can be checked if there was, you know, you were suspicious of that needing adjustment. The next thing I'm gonna do is the drain holes. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like on the other wing. Um, you can kind of see it beneath the plastic here. What it does is uh, the wings have a little bit of dihedral. So the outboard part of the wing is slightly tilted up. So any kind of moisture that was in the wing would, would run towards the fuselage. So I'm gonna put a little, um, little plastic ring with a hole in the center and then a little fabric doily that goes over that. Uh, that's just gonna give me a, a, a little defined hole by each rib to catch any sort of moisture that, uh, that would be collected in the wing. They can drain out of those drain holes. Now hopefully that's not something that happens very often because this airplane is gonna be kept inside my hangar. But uh, it's just a preventative measure. So uh, I'll get started on those little drain holes and that's the last thing before this ring's finished. All right, well, I took a flashlight and, sh and uh, shined it from the back side of the wing, and uh, I made a little dot where we clear the trailing edge and the rib, uh, so those my hole that's going to go there wouldn't have any interference. So I marked that, and I took my little plastic uh, ring here, drew circles around these rings. And then I kind of found a washer. It's about the size of the doily I want to make. And um, I'm using that washer to draw a circle that's going to be the size of the doily. All right. I've done that for the whole length of the wing. Get each one of the ribs. And now I'm gonna do just like uh, we did with the inspection holes. I'm gonna put some adhesive in the small circle where the plastic ring goes couple coats and I'll glue the plastic ring down and I'll put some adhesive over all that and then lay some fabric over the top of that and that, that'll lock that little ring into position. And then once I have uh, that all adhered to the uh, fabric, I'm gonna come back with my little uh, wood burning tool and burn a hole in the center to make a drain hole. So I'm sorry I forgot to film the rest of uh, putting these drain holes in, but you can see I've got them done. Got the fabric glued over the top, drain hole burned to the middle. A couple coats of thin adhesive on top of it to skewer it all. And that'll do it for this right wing. Um, I'm gonna take my iron off camera at about 225. I'm just going to take it along the edges, these pinked edges of these tapes. Uh, there's a little bit of roughness there, and uh, just a low setting on the iron will kind of smooth that adhesive down and smooth those edges so there won't be as much sanding. Uh, but with that, this thing will be coming out of the rotisserie today. We'll be moving on to the right aileron, uh, making some progress. Be priming and painting these wings here, hopefully in the next month. Um, so thanks for stopping by today. And uh, if you're enjoying my content, uh, then hit that subscribe button. And if you can hit the little bell, you'll get notified when I've got a new episode out. But uh, thanks for stopping by Fine with Brian. We'll see you next time.